Welcome back to the shop. It's finally time to get back to work on the Datsun yet again. Last time you saw it, I just put the clutch in and we just got it running. I'll be honest, uh, in between that video and now, I did get the car on the road and I had actually started to tune up on it a little bit and we ran into our next major problem. For those of you paying attention, I did post a picture of this on Instagram. The problem here is pretty obvious. If you look right there, you'll see a massive crack in the downpipe. I think it goes like all the way around or mostly anyway. I'm not sure when exactly this happened, but in the last couple weeks here, I did actually get back to trying to tune up on this thing and I fed it a little bit of boost and drove it into my shop and I saw that giant crack. So being that the sensor is right there, there can't be any exhaust leaks before that sensor, otherwise our AFR is gonna be wrong. Uh, before we can really get back to tuning, we have to fix that. So the crack on this downpipe kind of got me thinking. Uh, I know that when we were on power tour, this car pancaked so hard on the highway, I don't know, probably a dozen times. Thanks a lot, Southern Illinois. So it's possible that this thing has been cracked for a while. I always thought after we bolted everything back up on power tour that we still had an exhaust leak. And I didn't think that the V-band clamp down at the bottom of the downpipe was really leaking that bad. I'm not sure exactly if this is the cause. We'll, once we get it out, we'll look closer, but uh, that could be part of, part of why this thing has been a little funky to tune. So I'm gonna get this out of here. We gotta go up in the air, disconnect it from the rest of the exhaust then disconnect it from the turbo and we can pull it off the top and then we can actually look at how I'm going to fix this. I forgot to mention this. Uh, the last couple weeks I did actually get this car driving and started to tune on it just a little bit. Not that I'm great at tuning but I started to work it up to making a little bit of boost and then I noticed there was like a grinding sort of vibrating noise that started and I could actually feel it in the steering wheel. When I drove the car back home, I also noticed it seemed like a louder exhaust leak. That's when I found the cracked downpipe. And believe it or not, the thing is cracked so far that the downpipe is now touching the idler arm. So I'll show you that. You probably see maybe that the downpipe is actually touching the pitman arm right off the steering box. So that I believe is what my vibration sound and feeling was. If you see how much, if you hear, if you hear that noise right there, that's kind of what I was hearing and feeling in the car. That, that should be bolted tight up top and it is moving this much. So I think once I get this taken apart for the last time, maybe now I can actually fix this and set it up just a little bit better, uh, just so it's a little bit easier to get these bolts in and out. Right now, this thing is so tight in here to get these bolts out that I can't even have, oh yeah, this thing is cracked all the, oh my goodness, you guys, I can't wait for you to see this. Bolts on here are so difficult to get off just because this downpipe was made, you know, this is a two and a half inch flange coming out of this turbo and it's a three inch downpipe. And while that's cool, everybody likes having bigger exhaust. The three inch is a little excessive, I think. I think it looks awesome. It'll obviously flow the maximum that the turbo can, but it definitely, and if you guys can see, I'll zoom in on this. If you look right here, there is such little clearance to get anything on the head of this bolt because it immediately runs into the stepped up three inch size of this downpipe. So it's it makes getting this hardware on and off really, really hard and you don't have access to it. And then of course, like an idiot, I put a bunch of this fiberglass wrap on it to try to save you know the thing from melting the paint on the hood. And so now every time that you work on this, you get the distinct pleasure of filling your forearms and hands with fiberglass. It's everywhere. Uh, this is a cheaper brand. I think I bought this fiberglass wrap on Amazon or something. I guess I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't buy it again. Okay. There's the offending unit right there. Get you guys a better picture of this. All right. So if you look right there, there's a pretty serious crack that runs all along that weld and it goes, I don't know, I'd probably say, shit. That's probably 90% of the way around, you can see. So I'm gonna fix this. I think I'll start by getting rid of this fiberglass wrap. <clears throat> I mean, it worked. It worked for what I needed it for, but I think, uh, I think Steve 2.0 gave me some better stuff. So hopefully we won't have this trouble in the future. Okay. It's like 
taking a cast off, kind of, right? Except for not as satisfying. <laughs> there it is, naked, whatever. Exhaust wrap going in the trash. All right, so the plan is, I'm gonna take this flange, I'm gonna basically finish that crack, you know, break it off of here, and sand down, grind down all of the remaining piece of three inch pipe that was there, and then, I'm gonna cut this back and use a two and a half inch to three inch adapter to upsize this so that out of the flange it'll be two and a half and it'll step up to three inch. Uh, it'll look a little bit cheesy, but whatever. Uh, it should allow us to have better access to put bolts in there. So here's the two and a half to three inch adapter. Got this on Amazon. Essentially, right there, we're gonna cut this pipe back. Looks like probably right to that weld right there. And then I will grind off the flange as well. And then this piece is gonna go in its place. Okay, so a little bit of work with a channel lock and that flange broke right off. It was uh, broken probably 90% of the way around. So I'm gonna take this, hit it with a flap wheel and just buzz that nice and flat. And then this piece right here, is gonna go back on there. And then that will meet up with the rest of the downpipe here. So. So this is what we cut off. This is what we're gonna be replacing it with. And there's the downpipe right there. So that piece was right there. And now, with this new flange, or the reused flange and the new step-up piece, hopefully I can stick this right on here. I know it'll look a little bit goofy with that step in there, but I think that's about the best I can do. We're trying to save for a bigger project that's coming up in the future, so uh, trying to reuse as much as I possibly can and only buy parts that I absolutely need. I know, same thing everybody has problems with when they're building a the car. All right, it's now everybody's favorite time, trying to make your pipe fit into somewhere. So right here off the back of the turbo, I have the flange bolted back on there loosely, just so that I can make sure that it's centered. That way, you know, it should be as close to this orientation when I get the whole downpipe welded and back on the car. All right, so here is the very, very quick mock-up of the new downpipe. So we're gonna throw this in the car and just see how it fits. All right, so here's a view from, I mean, looking straight down. If you look right back here, you've actually got decent clearance to the throttle cable and looking straight down in there you guys probably can't see that looks like this thing is situated happily between the pitman arm and the trans bell housing and actually we gained a little bit of clearance to this brake master bleeder so i think that is going to be our new down pipe i'm going to throw it up in the air and check the fitment to the rest of the exhaust all right, well, I'm glad I checked that. Um, the connection, the angle to the downpipe to the existing exhaust is way off. So I think I'm gonna have to reverse my approach, put the car back up in the air, connect the exhaust or the downpipe to the rest of the exhaust underneath, and then break the tacks up here and see how things line up. I'm gonna have to uh, probably cut more of an angle on one of those pieces or something and finagle just a little bit more. Welcome back, it's the next day. Here is where we're at. So from the top here, this is sort of what needs to be made yet. So I've got the downpipe connected to the exhaust underneath the car, and I've got the pipe positioned pretty much where it was to where it doesn't really hit anything. I think what I need to do is just create a tiny little pie cut right here, just because the piece that came off, it was a couple of different bends in order to make that happen. So I don't know if you can see that there. I just need a little bitty pie cut and sliver that in there just like that, get it all tacked up and then pull everything back apart and weld it up. All right, so we have our little pie cut right here. And no, I don't love doing this this way, but anybody that's out there that's built exhaust or turbo stuff knows that, you know, stainless steel mandrel bends are really expensive. So all I'm gonna do now is just, you know, tighten this flange up on the turbo here real good and then get some good solid tacks on this thing and then take it all back apart as you can imagine this process is sort of tedious it takes a while it's real hard to get all the pipes lined up 
when you're doing a bunch of pie cuts, it can be a real pain. I know there's a little bit of gap in there. I'm going to be MIG welding this. So, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, you're going to MIG weld stainless steel pipe with steel wire? Yes. Yes, I am. And it's going to be fine because, I don't know, I don't really care that much. This whole downpipe was cheap and I had to cut it all the hell anyway to get it to work, so. All right, so here's a picture of the new downpipe, or redone downpipe. There's just that little pie cut in there. This is the original, and here's the adapter piece. This is gonna make this whole thing so much easier to get on and off. Uh, the transition being longer gives us access for the bolts. So, I'm gonna pull this out, weld it all back up, and then reinstall it, and then maybe we'll get to finishing the rest of the exhaust. So this afternoon I came out here to finish welding the downpipe today. I tacked it back up yesterday and I had it right where I wanted it. So today, uh, or last night anyway, I tightened it down to the turbine housing and also to the exhaust so that it wouldn't move. Today I came out here to take the nuts out, or the bolts out, get the downpipe off, and wouldn't you know it, I snapped a bolt off in the downpipe. And it took me uh, seven tries of welding a nut to it over and over and over again to finally back it out. I, I ran a tap through that hole just to chase the threads on it yesterday, right before I put this together. I don't know what it is with this turbine housing, but I have had nothing but awful luck trying to get bolts to stay in it and bolts to thread in it. All right, so here is a look at the newly redone downpipe. It doesn't look as good as it did before. Excuse the welds, I really don't care. However, it does fit really nicely, and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna work just fine. I'm gonna hook it up on the bottom side and we'll look at the rest of the exhaust. I think before I go any further, I just wanna see if this thing still has an exhaust leak or if it's been fixed by now. Well, it's got a little bit of an exhaust leak. In fact, I just noticed that turbo bolt right there is once again backed itself out. So I'll tighten that up and then we'll put this thing in the air. All right, for anyone curious what a turbo three inch exhaust looks like, homemade anyway, under a 510 wagon, here is kind of an idea of where I ended mine. Right there in front of the rear axle. I'm gonna put a jack under the rear axle to get it at ride height and I'll put the safety stand under the front and we'll see how much clearance we have for that pipe. So for pipes on this car, uh, most of the exhaust that's on the car right now has kind of been cobbled together with what I had sitting around. I did buy a resonator and a muffler. Uh, I got the downpipe from my friend Adair, who I got the car from and the turbo parts. So to finish the exhaust, try to get it out from under the car, I went on Amazon and I bought uh, a mandrel bend pipe kit I think this was like a hundred and six bucks or whatever. I'll put the link in the description below. Something else I should mention is that this is mild steel piping. Most of what comes off of the turbo is all stainless. I tried to do that to, I don't know, uh, help deal with heat a little bit. And because I had it, it was nice. But for the rest of the exhaust, I don't really care. It can be steel, it's fine for me. I guess I'll start with the excuse uh, that my TIG welder is out of gas because I think the regulator's broken and it leaks. So I leaked an entire tank of argon Yep, I'm very sad about that. So my MIG welder is all I have. And here's everything that comes in the kit. Two four foot long straights, two 180s, two 90s, and two 45s. Now some of the bends look a little funky, and unfortunately they have this expanded end on them. I don't know if that's gonna help me or hurt me, but either way, all of this for like 110 bucks is awesome. One 90 degree bend from even Rock Auto before shipping is like 18 or 19 bucks. If you're looking for a source for cheap mandrel bends, they also have these in stainless. I'll link it below. All right, so it's been an hour or so of fiddling, and here's what I've come up with. So, probably see in there, there's the over axle pipe. Kind of reused the turn down that I had before. Here is a view from underneath. Again, this is all three inch pipe. 
So it actually fits very, very well. I'm kind of impressed, to be honest. There, okay. And so the idea here then is just right out of the back of this pipe here, we're just gonna shoot right under the rear valence. All right, so here's what I have so far. And I reserve the right to revise this at a future date, but there she is from the side. And you can probably see up there, the over the axle, comes down below the spare tire carrier and then just kind of kicks out a little bit to the driver's side. And I think that's, I think that's fine with me. If I have to fix it or if I have to add a tip or cut that, I'll do that later. Uh, but I think it's gonna be just fine. I think it's gonna look good and it's gonna sound cool. It's not pretty, and yes, I know, it's all one piece. It's gonna make installing it really, really painful. However, uh, I do plan on, I think, somewhere right around here, I'll cut that and then put like a band clamp over it just to make it two-piece and easier to uninstall. But there it is. So, it's all welded. I did not do a nice pretty job on this one. I don't really care. I just really want it on the car. All right, it's time for my favorite part. This thing is so quiet inside. You can really hear the vibration in the motor mounts now. All right, back out here, it's a few days later. I'm gonna finally tackle the thing that's driven me nuts the most on this car, and that is the motor mounts. I've got an exhaust on it now, so we can actually run the car. Uh, it's time to swap out those poly bushings for rubber ones. All right, what I'm talking about is right down in there, that is the motor mount that I made, and those have polyurethane bushings in them. So my plan is to remove the motor mounts from the car one at a time. I'm gonna undo them from the block, then undo them from the cross member and take that motor mount over to the bench, take it apart. So I just got a block of wood I'm gonna put on the oil pan. Just so that we don't dent it up at all. There is the motor mount unbolted. And let's see if I can get my arm down in there. Okay, you can see it there. I'm gonna pop the other bolt right there and then pull the whole thing out. Okay, there's the bolt and there is my beautiful hideous motor mount. So this is the motor mount that I made. Don't worry about all the welds, whatever. So these are polyurethane bushings right here. Here's what I'm gonna use instead. This is a rubber leaf spring bushing and part number is right here. Yep, it's at K6559. This is a Moog part number. So these bushings are not exactly the right size for this. I am gonna have to trim them down lengthwise and I'm gonna have to open up the center hole just a little bit to allow that sleeve in there. However, this is the closest thing I could find to be able to remove this poly bushing and put the rubber one in its place. So I'm gonna get this apart and then we'll compare the two. All right, on second thought, I think I'm gonna trim these bushings down just like they are and just run the bolt through them. Uh, this isn't an actual leaf spring bushing setup. These are homemade motor mounts that I made myself. So I think the bolt sitting in that rubber should be fine. I'm gonna try it. Um, if you think, or if you know of a better source for like a rubber bushing like that, that fits into a sleeve like this, uh, let me know. Because these are Moog parts and the sleeve and these poly bushings and stuff came from Amazon. So, uh, or if you know of a softer polyurethane bushing like this that will fit into a sleeve like that, also let me know. I'd love to try something uh, softer than this. But in the meantime, I'm gonna run these rubber bushings and just throw the bolt right through it. I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, so there's one other dimensional difference I have to account for. So number one, don't pay attention to how crudely this is cut. I cut this on my bandsaw, whatever. Um, so if you look at the bushing halves here, there it is. The rubber bushing actually has a thicker bushing hat 
and it's actually domed a little bit. So, in order to get that to be the same dimension as the old one, I am gonna have to take this to the sander and just kind of sand some of this off and make the overall height of that bushing half a little bit shorter. That'll just make sure that when the bushings are pushed back into the sleeve like that, right there, and they're pushed back into the sleeve, that they'll fit in between the tabs that I have welded on the cross member. All right, so after, I don't know, 15 minutes or so of shaving these down, uh, running them on the grinding wheel, just to kind of flatten the slip out, I think this is just about right good enough to fit in there. With a little more shaving on that rubber bushing, it dropped right back in between the ears, just like it did with the poly bushings. I already have the main motor mount bolt through, so now I'm gonna line up the bracket with the block and put the four bolts back in the block, and get this side all nice and tight, and then go after the passenger side. So, car's up in the air now. It's a little easier to get at this motor mount for the passenger side with the car up in the air. So, I'm gonna repeat the same process I did with the driver's side push these bushings out, uh, rework the rubber ones, get those in here, get this thing back together. Hopefully, we can take this thing for a drive. As you can probably see here, the uh, motor mount is started uh, back into the tabs. I just have to kind of work it in there just a little bit, get a pry bar or something. Kind of a difficult spot to get in. A little bit of persuasion. Oh, well, there it goes. There we go. So you can probably see that in there. You see the block has fallen just a little bit. So I'm gonna try to gently lift it up, just like that. All right, as you can probably see here, got the bolts back in the block and bolt is still through the motor mount. So we're gonna tighten these up and then tighten that guy up. And then we'll set this thing on the ground. Okay, first start here with the new rubber bushings in the motor mounts. I really hope that this makes a difference. Yes, immediately. Now it still shakes a little bit at idle, which that's fine, but Oh man, I can't wait. We're gonna take it for a drive. Alright. So it's still idling kind of low right now. But I don't know if you guys can tell on camera. I don't know if you can tell, but it's better at idle, but the car still is shaking. So I just wanna see if you guys can pick up what it feels like to drive it now. seem quite a bit smoother but there are still some times where it will shake the motor and then there is that frequency right around 3000 rpm where everything buzzes it's really annoying okay check this out excuse how sweaty i am i just got time for gym i literally can't make this stuff up I was working on the Datsun this afternoon, and for the first time since I've owned it, I had no exhaust leaks. I put new gaskets in, and I'll explain all that in the actual video. I drove it 15 minutes down the road to the gym, and check this out. I noticed an exhaust leak develop, and wouldn't you have it, if you look right down here, look at that. The bolt fell out of the wastegate. Yep, and this bolt right here, that I just tightened right before I came. Yeah, it's loose again. For the life of me, oh, this one's loose too. Finger tight, wow. For the life of me, I cannot get the bolts to stay in this car. So I am gonna do something more drastic. I think uh, safety wires in my future. But uh, anyway, I think uh, I'm gonna hitch a ride with somebody. Well, it looks like that gasket on the wastegate is blown out too. I don't know if you guys can see that. Fantastic, I need a new one of those too. So, grab some bolts from the hardware store and get home. All right, back out in the shop. Finally, I got parts. So, today I'm gonna replace some gaskets. I showed you in the last clip that I took with my phone that the wastegate gasket 
the wastegate was actually came unbolted and the gasket blew out. So I bought new gaskets right here. These are like a single piece stamped stainless steel right here. They just have like this raised lip right here that must be like a crush fit and that's your actual sealing surface. As opposed to these guys right here. These are a multi-piece gasket. I don't know exactly what's in between if it's some sort of graphite material or whatever. Uh, but I've had really bad luck with these. So this is a blown out turbo gasket for the turbo inlet. So anyway, the turbo gasket right now is one of these. I'm gonna replace it with this, as well as the wastegate gasket. New bolts and lock washers and everything. Uh, we'll warm it up, get it hot, tighten it back down again, then we'll take it for a little spin. Wow, man, these gaskets are cheap. This is the gasket that I just put on this turbo like a week ago, and look at this. It's already delaminated. Right there, it's already coming apart and this was gonna blow out and things were gonna loosen up and this gasket was gonna be shit. One piece of feedback, if you're gonna buy a CX Racing Manifold, don't use their gaskets. They're not very good. So just buy the aftermarket stainless ones. All right, just got those gaskets in. Just fire it up and check the leaks. It seems like those gaskets fixed the problem. It's actually sealed up under the hood now. I don't hear any obvious exhaust leaks. So I'm gonna button this thing up and take it for a quick drive. We'll just double check that nothing else crazy happens. As soon as we get back, I will check the bolts that I just put in, make sure everything is still tight. As you guys can imagine, this is really hard to hold a camera while trying to drive a five speed. Damn it. Okay, so far, anyway, it seems like everything is sealing up, exhaust-wise. I think I have one small leak under the car somewhere, maybe. All right, and with that, I think the Datsun is finally ready to tune. I don't know how well it came across in the video, but the, the bushings and the, the motor mount bushings and the exhaust system being extended all the way to the back of the car, that's a huge difference. This car's way quieter on the inside and so much smoother down the road. Uh, sometimes videos like this take a turn and I end up fixing a whole bunch of stuff I didn't plan on. That's kind of what happened here. Uh, the exhaust system I did because I was sick of it and it was loud and all of the broken pieces and the blown out gaskets was just sort of a consequence of doing that. So 
I finally got the car back to where I think I'm comfortable working on the tune-up again. Um, next video, I want to show you guys putting a boost controller in, kind of how to dial that in, set it up, and step up the power. I'll walk you through at least what I've done so far with this tune and where I got those ideas. Uh, for those of you who have watched this far, thank you. Seriously, I appreciate it. My subscribers, both long-standing and brand new, I really appreciate you guys. And if you, new viewer, like what you're seeing, consider subscribing. There's 30-ish or 34, maybe five videos on this car. Uh, I also have videos on my other cars. So if you like what you're seeing, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Thank you all so very much, and I'll check you out in the next one. <laughs>